everyone, Senrai Kai here. Today I'm going to be watching the sixth episode of the fourth season of Overlord. And last episode we got to meet a dwarf. He he tried to be all sneaky, you know, I think he like put on an invisible cloak or something, tried to sneak away from Aoda, but did not did not work at all. And Ions was successfully able to meet him and pretty much, uh, he pretty much was on board for everything Ions wanted to do. He obviously had a passion for the runes and all that good stuff and... Yeah, pretty much perfect, perfect for what we wanted. Uh, but the, but what was less perfect is we had these Quagawas, which are like just bad news for the dwarves. And yeah, we, we were able to kind of round up the ones that were there, that place. But like, I guess there's this full-on attack that's attacking wherever the rest of the dwarves are. So uh, it might be a chance to save the dwarves, get some appreciation, get get some rewards, compensation for our efforts. I don't know. It, it should be good either way. But uh, yeah, let's just jump into it and see exactly how this conflict we apparently uh decided to decide to join into uh, how it goes so three two one but yeah those sound like kawagawas yes they definitely are trying to do that they found like a secret path or something something about a great chasm i, I don't know Yeah, it's always that argument. It's actually people left behind, but nobody wants that coming towards them. It is cool to actually see the full-on dwarven army in action. See how they how they operate. As my cat gets off my lap, okay. Well, that looks like a pretty sturdy door. I wonder how long it'll hold. Hopefully long enough. Maybe they have their own strategy. Maybe a fancy weapon. You know, if I like a bazooka. <laughs> Don't worry if it's the undead, I think it is. He, he, he's cool, he's not gonna hurt you. <laughs> Definitely wasn't expecting that though. Much like the other dwarf. Like I said, the other dwarf's surprise was one of the fun aspects of the previous episode. Nobody ever expects just this magical skeleton daddy to walk into their place and, you know, change their life forever. But Ainz does do that sometimes. Yeah, that man can tell you all about it. I still don't understand why that dragon almost falls over, like... A dragon should have better balance than that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there are still some characters in this, characters in this episode that we haven't seen yet. A lot of them we have. Obviously that epic fight there we've seen. The arena. And some familiar faces like the Blue Roses, of course, but... And the, like... Oh, the other country's version of the Blue Roses. Baharuth Empire, that's, that's what they're called. I, I didn't forget. They did do that. Chalter used her stuff. Got a bit of a black aura going around him. Is that intentional? <laughs> that he is. I mean, how much choice do they really have? I can't see a better option, really. <laughs> a 
Well said. Smart man. And there we go. Our foot in the door. They currently don't know what's uh, what awaits them, the reinforcements the enemy got. But they will, soon enough. Everyone does. <laughs> yeah, they probably weren't expecting the door to open, but they don't know why. And he was about to say, the arm's coming off. And boy, did it. What am I looking at? Uh. Oh, okay, skeleton. Okay, gotcha. Just a big old shield. I was, I was like, did they whip out like a big old mechanical weapon? Because I do associate dwarves with that. Because of like Warcraft and stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, when you got some death knights, you The show's done a great job of making it clear just the level of power one single Death Knight has, so... Yeah, here we go. Uh, not, not even a fight. What kind of dwarves are you, have you seen? Not to mention giant dwarves sounds kind of oxymoronic, but... <laughs> yep, pretty much just one shot in all of them. Sometimes more than one in one shot. They make it like a... One third shot? I, I don't know how that works. <laughs> Bide harder. Do you think you're going to do better? Okay, well, I guess you can do that better. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Man, these Death Knights are awesome. Not if you're on the receiving end of their damage, but they're, they're fun to watch and definitely good to have on your side. You're getting closer, I guess. I mean, I would never doubt them, but... Also get a little bit of blood on your face. Okay. I haven't really had a good chance to mention him, but I do like his beard. I saw a yellow bow on him. Yeah, he's doing his like communication thing he does. Okay, so we did lose some. I guess it was one hell of a fall. I think you're kind of jumping to conclusions, but I do know he's like, he really wants that. Okay, he's got a green bow for his. I can think I like the yellow bow better. Greetings, gentlemen. The one looks like he has a cold. I just love hearing people call him that. Maldo Heka. No doubt. <laughs> Especially when there's something in it for you. That is the idea. Minerals. I 
And this is the fundamental thing about trade, you know? What we have for what you have, what we have a lot of for what you have a lot of. I knew you were going to be in trouble as soon as I saw you. How do you imagine that's quite tempting? Go again, right to the nest. Of course, he's a brew master, that's why he looks like that. Okay, it makes sense. Well, sure, but. Irons is irons and. He's got quite the forces. <laughs> he might make that into a, an undead dragon. Everything. <laughs> well, if you'll die without the booze, you know, it. Can't be too picky. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? All of them, okay. <laughs> A slave is a strong word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no haggling down here. Yeah, I probably should give an answer a bit sooner than that. Well, what do you guys think of that? You want to speak up first? There we go. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> This isn't quite what I was expecting, it's quite funny. I mean, that's your dwarven standard. <laughs> he is not wrong. <laughs> That deliberation was quite short. I mean, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Problem. Right. He's not unreasonable. That's a good plan. Heinz might be a little bit evil, but he's certainly less evil than some American corporations. Ha ha ha! 
<laughs> oh, you dwarves. Yeah, <laughs> after that reaction, I knew who was at that door. <laughs> Oh, that's a fancy uh, container. Yeah, I kind of want it. No, not not at all. <laughs> Probably haven't heard of it, but trust me, it's there. Work for me. I've heard good things about it. What are we pulling out? A rune blade? That does look pretty cool. That's definitely like an MMO kind of weapon the design. He just goes so so quick. He goes from like yelling to looking at him like that. That is definitely a big gap. Well, I ask you to do better. It's, it's more or less 20. He moved in, I was trying to count it, but... It's like she just stares at him the whole time. The height difference makes him look like he's talking to a bunch of children. Especially with that particular angle. Yeah, I guess it is kind of one way to take that. Yeah, at least the runesmiths themselves aren't going to be abandoned. That's all we ask. Yeah, that was that was part of the agreement. We gotta go deal with that. Shouldn't take too long. Do we? Well. Right. <coughs> I should try to remember his name. Gondo. Okay, that makes sense actually. You have to lose some important stuff when you abandon the capital. Yeah, there's no point in not keeping it. It's... What are you saying? Definitely makes sense. Don't you hate when that happens? Open the gates! Uh, okay. 
Yeah, I mean, we did see some of that. <laughs> Sounds terrifying, a mass fly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who needs a bridge and you can fly? Right. I mean, we saw that, but he did not. <laughs> I got my notebook. <laughs> Those eyes. That is generally how it works. And what are you doing, Aura? Tracking. <laughs> I'm I'm talking here, okay? Don't be rude. He's an idea. Oh, oh, okay. That looks hot. So we just have a sea creature that swims in literal lava. Okay. He just pulls out a gas mask. Also, yeah, that's a good point. I can't tell if I've heard that spell before, Bertha Titania. It sounds kind of familiar, but... Still a silly name. So the usual, okay. Naturally. Is it about to end? Oh god, the episode is about to end. Damn it. Okay, I knew dragons were mentioned in the show before. I forgot that they really got into that here. Uh, rest in peace, that party. So one of the more tragic things in the show. One of the first, like, adventuring parties he, you know, kind of bonded with. Just all getting slaughtered. And of course, there's the whole sister thing with that one character. <sighs> I can't believe the episode just ended. I was... Uh, I mean, I know these episodes were only like 22 minutes or so, but still, I was like... I was getting ready to get into the, the actual attacking of the city, you know, reclaiming of the city. But uh, no, we don't have time for that. That's, that's for next episode. Which makes sense, it's just that's unfortunate. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that is episode six of season four of Overlord. And yeah, it's pretty much uh, what I expected. We <laughs> ventured our way over to the Dwarven City, where they currently are. We took out some of those Quagagagals, right? That were, you know, causing a bit of a bit of a problem, but not like all of them, right? Because that's a bit of a, that's the next episode's thing. It was just enough to keep them from, like, falling, you know, evacuating, collapsing, right? That was uh, the level of extinguishing he did to them in this episode, so we could actually, you know, get negotiations going. And we certainly did. <laughs> 
we talked to like a kind of a council sort of thing of the dwarves, and we pretty much uh, yeah discussed our terms, what we wanted, what we expected from them, and what we'll what we will provide. Right? Never really too much to go into any of that. We already kind of knew what Bynes wanted. He was interested in the rune craft and all that. And he basically said, "Okay, I'll uh, take take back your city for you. Take care of this Quaga Kagagigi problem, and uh, you give me all your runesmiths. You know, that's that was a deal. The one guy tried to like haggle down, and be like, how about we just do this instead? It's like." Did I, did, I, did I stutter? <laughs> give, give me those runesmiths, and they pretty much agreed, right? So that, that, that all got resolved, you know, without too much difficulty. I do love how much they just kind of, like, exhaled after he left, you know? Like, it was obviously very tense, very worrying, because this super powerful leader of a country, magical skeleton, shows up, you know, with all this sudden stuff. And, yeah, that's, it's, that's good. it can't be an easy thing to just deal with all of a sudden, but, I mean, they handled it well enough. Pretty much as well as they could have, I, I suppose. But yeah, we got all the runesmiths in a room, and he gave a lovely speech that Shaltier was really into. And yeah, it all got pretty much uh, settled. Now it's pretty much just a matter of taking... Uh, basically, Ayn's doing his end of the, the deal, and we're using Go Go Godon was his name, I think, uh, to uh, as, as the guide. And he guided us pretty well, you know? There were some obstacles that he thought would be a real problem, but really weren't, because Ayn's Ayn's Ayn's, right? He can fly, he can uh, magically shield people that you know, are, are affected by poison. Well, he just isn't, right? The uh, the Ayn's way. So. But, uh, yeah, just, Ayn's is a skeleton, but, you know, undead, but not, not everyone in Nazareth is. Aura is not, so, you know, it was kind of nice that we had to use a spell not just on the non nazarek person, but also one of his own that don't share that unique undead quality. The show definitely would be less interesting if, like, every Nazareth member was, you know, an undead, right? So, I am glad we have a bit of variety. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, that was pretty much the episode. We got to see the Death Knights do some cool death killing stuff, and also we saw at least one member of the enemy's team that seemed fairly powerful. Like you look like he used one of those um, uh, martial arts, whatever, whatever they call it in the show, right? So um, that's probably going to be the best, the biggest challenge of uh, the enemy army, right? I, I don't know how much of a challenge it'll really be. Pro probably not a huge amount, but I guess we'll see next episode. But yeah, I definitely enjoyed this episode. I look forward to the next one. So thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.